Hey, John here. Let's take a look at the digital analog converter that I use to generate the RGB signals for the VGA interface on the VDP on the Z80 Nouveau project. First, a quick thanks to all my subscribers and supporters of my channel. Thank you very much, especially the VIPs listed here. If you'd like to be a Patreon, uh, look at the link in the description below this video on YouTube and uh, join along. Okay, so here's the setup. The usual Raspberry Pi that I use to program this FPGA that operates as a peripheral to this Z8S180 chip here, and there's the RAM there. This is the Z80 Nouveau project, the prototype setup. Someday I'll design a single board that has the CPU and the memory and the FPGA and the peripherals, including the stuff over here, which is what we're going to talk about today, which is the digital to analog converter that we use to generate VGA output. Uh, the wires and stuff you can see on this board, what we're looking at here are, what do we got here? Six wires that come off of this header here that you can look up in the PCF file. I'll show you where that is in a minute. These things come out here. There's two bits for red, two bits for green, and two bits for blue. And these resistors here make up the digital to analog converter that we need to generate the analog signals that go out to the VGA monitor. These two over here are the horizontal and vertical sync signals that also have 100 ohm series resistors on them over there to make sure that uh, we, you know, just to, just to dampen the the edges on these signals a little bit so we don't overdraw current and stuff like that on the uh, outputs of the FPGA just to you know protect those a little bit okay so the short of it is we have a ground wire that comes off the uh, off this header here that's this green wire right there that hits the blue bus on this uh, connector here which is also connected to the ground going to the VGA monitor the resistors here, each of the red, green, and blue signals have a 470 ohm and a 1K ohm resistor on each of their two outputs of the FPGA. And then on the VGA side, the two resistors come together over there. So if you want to build a DAC to follow along with what I'm doing here, playing around with the VDP, that's what you need to do for each of the pairs of the video signals coming out of the VDP of FPGA code. We'll look at that in a minute. Uh, that's what you need to do to generate the right voltages in here. Now, where did I come up with these resistor values? Well, it's simple Ohm's law. We know we got a 75 ohm terminator in the VGA video monitor on the, on the monitor side, right? So, and we know that the full on voltage level on VGA, you can look it up in Wikipedia or whatever. I believe it's 0 0.7 volts. I looked up that voltage. I did the Ohm's law for what's the you know IR drop over the 75 ohms from 0 0.7 volts um, to ground. Calculate the current flow in there. Then you apply Ohm's law over here to calculate what you need, uh, what resistors you need to bring it up to half a 0 0.7 volts and what you need to bring it up, you know, a quarter of that or whatever it comes out to. Uh, and uh, from 3.3 volts coming out of the FPGA. So 500 ohms and 1,000 ohms is close enough uh, to the four, eight, 470, I believe, and the 1K. Close enough. I mean, this color will be more accurate than composite video ever was coming out of the real deal and going into a TV screen circa 1982 or whenever this chip came out. This being the manual here, we could probably find out when the chip first was released. I can't remember. I'll bet it was like 83 or something like that. When did they release this chip? Blah, 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 yada, 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 1984. Yikes. All right, well, this is actually probably not the first manual. This is the manual for the uh, 9118, which is not the first chip that they released. I don't know if they released all the chips at the same time, you know, the variants of this thing. They probably had, you know, the first, you know, the uh, DI9918 uh, came first, probably, and then they added the other ones. I don't know, whatever it is. Anyway, early 80s and crappy TV component video you had back then. Uh, yeah, the colors look pretty crappy. This uh, point is this looks at least as good, if not better than that. So what are we getting at here? The TI, 
VDP chip that we're modeling in the Nouveau for now uh, had 16 possible colors. They give you the table in the manual you just saw the cover of. And basically, zero and one are both black. Uh, zero is differentiated from black, black by uh, claiming it can be transparent in certain contexts. Uh, one of which is if you use zero as a color in a sprite, what you do is you see through this sprite and you can see whatever color shines through behind that sprite. So if your sprite had like a shape like a donut in the hole, you could use zero instead of one to paint the, the, the portion of the sprite that is the hole. And you can look through the donut hole and see the background through it, okay? Uh, right now, that's not a concern. That happens at a higher level in the code. We'll talk more about this when we look closer at how sprites work in our, um, in our Verilog code for that. Meanwhile, it doesn't matter. Zero and one are both black as far as the RGB output goes at this very low level. In other words, if you have transparent uh, color and uh, you're in an object that has a, a transparent color on it and the thing you can see behind it is also transparent and the background is transparent, it becomes black is my point. So for our purposes today, zero and one are both black. You've got medium and light green. You've got like, a, you should have like a dark green as well. And they have some asymmetry. There's a dark green. So you've got three different greens. What do you got? You got a dark blue, um, light blue. Is there a medium blue somewhere in here? Maybe not. Oh, there you go. Cyan is their medium blue. And then they got a dark red and a medium red and light red, dark yellow, light yellow. They don't have a medium yellow, but they got a purple instead. And they have a gray and a white. Oh, gray is like 50 cent, 50%. Uh, voltage, so that'd be like a 0.35 volts, give or take, and this would be the full 0.7 volts that goes into the VGA monitor. I'm going off the top of my head. I don't remember that maximum on uh, voltage for VGA. I believe it's 0.7. If we warp over to Google real quick and ask it, what the heck is the VGA voltage spec? Yada yada yada. Zero to 0.7 for maximum brightness. Horizontal vertical sinks are usually 5 volt TTL. In our case, they're going to be 3.3 volts, and it works just fine and dandy, at least on every monitor I've ever used. So I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, so anyway, problem is, point is 0.7 volts it is. All right, so these are the colors that are supposed to be represented by these 4 bit values. For the VDB colors that you, you know, you, you define in your. Uh, when you configure the VDP, you know, what's your text color, what's your background color, what's the border color, what's your sprite color, and so on. You can choose from these 16 colors. Now, uh, the more uh, observant viewer would notice that you got more than 16 colors if you have three times two resistors, right? You've got 64 possible colors now. So what I need to do is define these colors and create a mapping from these 4-bit values here that then generate the correct voltages to represent those colors using the, uh, the 6 bits coming out of the FPGA into this DAC. So this DAC can generate more different colors than the VDP can, but I don't care right now. I just need to be able to support something that looks reasonably correct to look like it's uh, the VDP that's connected to my screen. All right? The reason I need to do that is because some people have created some video games like Tetris and I want to be able to play them and I wanted to be able to see the right colors. So let's have a quick look at this. Here's the color palette right here that does the mapping. This is the, uh, the Project 2067, my Z80 Nouveau project. There'll be a link to the GitHub repo that we're looking at the code in here and the description below this video on YouTube. So you can follow along. I'm in this directory here. I always show you where, what's going on. Make sure you have the context. We're in the FPGA Nouveau uh, VDP 99 directory. There's a bunch of different projects all in different subdirectories in here. Different variations of the VDP and the different types of uh, simple. Started out really easy and then we started creating more and more sophisticated uh, applications 
that the uh, processor can use. And this right now is the one that has most of, it is all but the sprites are working right now as I record this video in this subdirectory right here. So this is the one that I'm in right now, okay? So if we look at this color palette, well, why don't we do a quick review? Let's have a look, see at the top level, Verilog file. This is the thing that um, these ports here directly interface with the PCF file, which is in the, in the parent directory here. It has been a few weeks since I've talked about this on my YouTube channel. All right, that thing there defines which pin numbers on the FPGA map to these names, uh, these port names in the top level module. Somewhere in here, there will be some VGA colors. So here's the VGA horizontal and vertical sync, the red, green, and blue, the pair of bits for each one of those. And in here, I also note, here's the DAC resistor values. So somebody asked me at one point, did I document this anywhere? Well, there is your doc, okay? So we're talking about it on this video as well, all right? So as I showed on the, uh, on the photo of the thing on the bench, each one of these has two resistors coming off of it, all right? So these are the resistors. These numbers here, if you look really close at this board, the FPGA board here, you can see these little numbers around on all these pins. These are not necessarily the pin numbers of this header. They're the pins of the FPGA. So if this is FPGA number, uh, pin number like 56, you can see right there, there'll, it'll go to this pin over here, right? So these numbers here on the PC board match these numbers here in the PCF file. And this thing here is the name of the port in the top level module that connects to pin number 120, which is going to go to a 1K resistor in the red analog output. Okay, so there's your bearings if you're having trouble following along there. All righty, and then inside here, once we warp into Verilog, we leave the realm of reality, and we're all just dealing with code now and uh, expressing ourselves using Verilog, these are the signals as they arrive and appear in the code. So there's a two-bit value for red and so on, right? There's your horizontal vertical sync. Now, we've looked at this many times on my channel. This video is part of a playlist. There'll be a link to the playlist below, and you can follow along in there or go back and look at old stuff if you want. Now, there's some comments in here, I guess, and I'm getting ready for some joysticks as well. Before I created the, the palette lookup table, I just hard-coded it and just made, uh, what did I do now? Just a crappy um, seven-color output. And these colors didn't even come close to matching what the VDP really did. I mean, it, they, they were different colors, and you could see stuff on there. But if you've tried to play um, the production Dave's version of Tetris, for example, it really looked wrong. And because I have fewer colors, if you only deal with three bits instead of the four bits needed from the VDP, then some of the colors were the same color and you couldn't see certain things. So I'm like, oh, darn it. I had to add this to the design. So here's how this thing works. When I take a color that comes out of the VDP, and I've talked about this to some, at some length on my channel before as well, how this whole thing works and, and um, how the video comes out and how the border colors work and all that fun stuff. We'll be talking a lot more about this in the future. One of the things that comes out of it is the 4-bit VDP color as well as the horizontal and vertical sync signals. I take these and I run them through the palette lookup. Well, I take the color anyway. When I take the 4-bit color, I send it into this palette and I get back three pairs of bits that come close to matching those colors based on the resistor values I chose in the DAC. The horizontal and vertical sync go directly out of the top level module as they are. Well, I invert them because VGA, when it's running in 640 by 480 mode, which is what I'm using, needs them to be inverted. Okay, so that's how they get connected together. They're generated in here from the four bit colors that come out of the VDP logic in the uh, other Verilog code. So what do we got? Color palette, map these things to a 6-bit RGB DAC. There's the color going in. There's the three pairs of uh, signals coming out. 
I decided to use regs here instead of wires. Normally I would put wire outputs and then in here I would declare these registers and then I would assign the output wires, the values from the registers that I declare in here. But that adds a bunch more lines of code and stuff and I decided that I would be lazy and just take these reg variables and write directly to them on the port. The reason you'd normally use wires and reassign them in here just for the sake of creating more lines of code is so that when you're debugging and things like that, you can change what goes out these signals more conveniently. It gives you another layer that you can play around with when you're evolving your code. If you do it like this, this is so trivial, trivial it's, it, it'll be fine. But in a more complex system, quite often you need to have a place where you can wedge in some other conversions and translations and things. Like you saw a minute ago in the top level module when I decided I wanted to invert the H-Sync and V-Sync lines. There would be otherwise no sane, simple, single place to do that if I didn't do this leapfrogging that I said I omitted in this file, all right? I'm just saying, do as I say, not as I do, right? As <laughs> famous, famous last words. So this is a simple straight lookup. You got a four-bit value, so there's going to be 16 um, different uh, 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 cases in this, uh, in this block here, okay? So if it's zero or a one, as you saw, the colors are going to be black. If I want a mid, uh, what do I want? A mid green it should be a medium green. What is that? That's a two. So we look this up over here. What do we got? A medium green. I decided, what would that be? Uh, green is a two. So that's one of the two bits that comes out of the DAC, right? That's the most significant bit of the DAC output. So that's the. Mm, more on than off, but not all the way on, right? Me medium green. Uh, what do we got for number tray over here? That's a light green, so that should be all of them on. So you can see now it's a three. Now three is a both in, in binary, that's two bits on. Maybe I should have made these in binary to make that more obvious. But I think if you're writing Verilog and following along in this video, you should be able to convert a two-bit binary number into decimal in your head. Okay, so and so on for dark blue, light blue, dark red, blah, 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 blah. You can see gray is half on and white is full on. All right? Now, if these colors don't look right to you, you can reach in here and change them around a little bit. As I go back in here, if gray is one and white is three... A lighter gray would be a 2, right? Because this is the least significant bit on. If I changed it to 2, it would be a binary 1, 0. That would be the most significant bit on. Most significant bit on. Least significant bit off. And that would be a brighter gray. So when we said medium green... Why did I choose... I don't know. Mid green. I decided to use the brighter green. Instead of, you know, all zeros is black, right? And 010 would be a dark green, I guess. Oh, I see. Medium would be a 2, and a light green would be a 3. So there must be a, a dark green in here somewhere that's set to a 1. Red, yellow, green, right there. There you go. That, okay, that's how I got a dark green. All right, never try to think while speaking, right? I, I guess, is that a thing? I, I don't know. All right, so there's the translation thing and this color palette job right there. And there's the motive for the colors here. And the true motive is, once again, to play a video game and have it look right. So that's how this thing fits together. That's how it hooks in to the top-level code. That's how you build your own DAC. If you're going to make one on a uh, perf board like I did over here, and just stick some uh, resistors in series and pairs. That's all there is to it. So if you want to hook yours up like that and follow along, be my guest. Fun will ensue.